For our question and answer series for Research Like a Pro with DNA, our question is, how do you view and analyze a large Collins Leeds cluster chart? And sometimes these cluster diagrams are so enormous that it's challenging to be able to understand what we're seeing. We have to work with the zoom and move in and out. And then we have to also use the accompanying Excel file. So let's go through and see how this works. So when you use the DNA GEDCOM client to create a Collins leads method file, the output looks like this. You have a file that shows up as an HTML file that you can open with Chrome or your web browser, and it's titled CLM3D underscore, and then the name of the test taker. And then at the end, you'll see the range that you used. So I decided to open up this 20 to 200 cluster matrix chart from matches for Robert at Ancestry. And when I double click on it, it opens in my web browser in Chrome and it shows me at the very top left of this enormous purple cluster. And the biggest cluster is always in the top left. And so this is usually what you see when you first open a Collins leads method chart. And the names I've blurred here, but they're very legible at 100% uh, zoom. And then you can see down here that the scroll bar is going to let us scroll all the way over to here. And this other scroll bar will let us scroll all the way down. So there's quite a bit more space to scroll. Well, as this continued to load, I got the error message eventually that said error out of memory. So my computer didn't have enough memory to open this very big cluster chart. And it was so big because it was going down to 20 centimorgans, 20 to 200 centimorgans just included too many matches for my computer's memory to be able to open. So I decided to open up a smaller Collins leads method diagram because this one didn't go down as low. The more, the lower your lower threshold is, the more matches it will include. And so putting the lower threshold at 50 will make the chart a more manageable size. So 50 to 400 centimorgans. When I opened up this one, I saw the same big purple cluster, but then I didn't get the error. So then I was able to manipulate it a little bit better and I could zoom in and out using the Chrome settings and then zooming in and out. And I can also use this magnifying glass to zoom or my keyboard shortcut control and the minus or control plus. So going out to 25% makes it so that the names are not really legible anymore, but I can see the whole cluster. And as I scroll to the right and scroll down, I can see additional clusters. And I can see that the clusters go diagonally like you'd expect. And the way the Collins leads method can organize the clusters is by super cluster. And I always choose that method. A gray line is drawn around the super cluster. So I can see that the first 15 clusters here are all part of one big super cluster. Then to see what cluster numbers these are, I zoomed back in a little bit so I could read the cluster numbers. Now, just a side note that as you're looking at your clusters and understanding them, sometimes you might want to just take notes in your research log about what you're seeing, such as supercluster one includes clusters one through 15, supercluster two includes clusters 16 through 19, and some clusters are not in a supercluster, they're just on their own. And there's even an easier way to do this than by looking at the HTML file, and that's by looking at the Excel file. So to open the Excel file, go back to the folder that DNA GEDCOM puts your reports in, and you'll see that there's a, an Excel file accompanying your HTML file. And when you open that Excel file, you see a very similar thing. You see the names along the side and the top and the colored cells. And if you zoom out, you can go to the view and then zoom and go to 25%. Then you can see more of what's going on in the first cluster, which is still really big. And then you can use the scroll bars to scroll over, to scroll down, 
And then you can see the, the first big supercluster and those first 15 clusters and how they're all connected. All right. And as you scroll over and to the right, you see all the superclusters. So here's another one and a supercluster here. But what's even better about the Excel file that you don't have in the HTML file is the three tabs along the bottom. And we've been looking at the chart, but the data and the ancestors, those tabs are going to be very useful for you to analyze each cluster and figure out who's who. So as you look through the data tab, you'll see the same colors and cluster numbers, as well as the super cluster number. So you have a lot of information here. Then you have the match name, the amount of centimorgans they share, and the match page for the person and their tree if they have one attached to their DNA results. Then you can even add a, there's a column here if their tree is private and you can add your own column for notes. And as you figure out who the common ancestors are for each cluster, you can even take note of that. To save you some time of finding the common ancestors, you can use the ancestors tab. This tab tells you the names of ancestors who are found in certain clusters. And then it tells you which matches have that ancestor in their tree. This only works if you have downloaded the trees or the ancestors of your matches using the DNA GEDCOM client. That's a box, a box that you can check. So when you're downloading your matches with DNA GEDCOM client, you can check this box here to gather trees. And when you check that box, you get another spreadsheet generated besides the M or match file, besides the in common with or shared matches file. In addition to that, you get an A or a tree file, depending on if you're using a Mac. And that has all of the ancestors from your matches trees. So you can imagine it's quite a long file. Well, the Collins leads method uses the ancestor information to give you the names of ancestors that are found in your clusters. So now I can see that in cluster 16, almost all the matches you have Edward Traherne Ashton in their tree are from that cluster number 16. And so that's giving me a clue that he's probably one of the common ancestors for that cluster. And then I can see that cluster one has Lucy Miller and Stephen Longstroff. And so I recognize those names from my father-in-law's pedigree chart. And so I know that those are on his maternal side. So all of these clusters I know are maternal. And as I continue to scroll down, I can find uh, the Dyer surname and find the side that I'm working on. So this is a really useful part of the Excel file that you get with your Collins leads method. And rather than spending a lot of time trying to zoom in and out of this chart file, uh, once you look at it once, you really can just focus on the data and the ancestors tab to really help you uh, figure out who the common ancestors are for each of those clusters. If you want to generate Collins leads method charts using your match and in common with files that you've already generated from downloading your matches, that can speed up the process and it can allow you to um, use a a subset of matches. Like let's say you delete out a bunch of maternal matches from that file, and then you just want to cluster only paternal matches. You can have that flexibility to do that if you use your match and in common with files. So you tell the, the program where those files are located, then you choose a range. And if you have downloaded the ancestors or the trees of your matches, then check this box. And uh, the range that I, that I chose for this example was 35 to 110. I wanted to include more smaller matches, but to make it a more reasonable size and not to have too many matches, I brought my top threshold down to 110. So doing that, it generated pretty quickly. And I was able to see the HTML file here. And the Excel file also was able to be seen easily. It wasn't too slow or too sluggish. If you get too many matches, then sometimes the HTML file will give you that memory issue or um, the Excel file will be hard to open. So we just have to be careful not to include all of our matches from eight to 3000 centimorgans. That would probably be really challenging to generate a cluster chart for. So when you're trying to choose the right range for your Collins leads method chart, just be aware that um, you could get that memory issue. So you, you don't want your computer to say not enough memory. Using the Excel file can really help with that too. 
Um, but we usually want to go as low as we can without breaking it, you know, without having the memory issue. And that's when we have distant research questions. We're trying to get a low threshold to include matches that are more distant. But after we go down to 20 centimorgans, each time we go down another centimorgan to 19, 18, 17, and so forth, we're adding exponentially more matches. Uh, there's just so many more matches that share less and less centimorgans with us. For example, at Ancestry, I have 2,789 matches from 20 and up. And then I have 34,000 matches from six to 20. So the bulk of my matches are all under 20 cent organs. So I would caution against going too far below 20 cent organs. I would maybe start at 35 or something like that. That's a good low number for your low threshold number. And just remember that the lower you go, the longer the file will take to generate and the harder it is to use and to navigate around it. And probably my main suggestion for that issue is to use the Excel file because that seems to work the best and it includes the data and the ancestor tabs, which will be the most useful thing for you.